Okay, last time we constructed our impossible differential cryptano impossible differential. Now we will turn into an attack and perform the impossible differential cryptanalysis. So in the previous slide we obtained the 17 round impossible differential, but as you can see there are uh, differences in two bytes here. So when we add more rounds to the top, since we are going to attack more rounds, uh, these two differences actually does not help us much. So instead of using this we, in, our prag in our attacks, we remove this first line. So we reduce this impossible differential to 16 rounds. And instead of something uh, specifying this by the explicitly, we realize that the whole attack works if we replace it with E0 tilde. So instead of the 17 round impossible differential, we are going to use this 16 round impossible differential. So the bottom line is the same. But at the top, we remove the top uh, round, and instead of uh, specifying all of the eight bits, we only specify the first bit, which is the difference one, and left the remaining bounds, uh, bits as question mark. Since the cipher has some kind of a symmetry, if this is an impossible differential for 16 rounds, so this it means that this input difference never goes to this output difference after six at 16 rounds of uh, encryption. It also means that if you, you know, shift this byte to four more to the right, and this to here, it also means that this input difference never goes to this output difference after 16 rounds of encryption due to the symmetry of the cipher. So we are going to use this one. So next step is, since you have this 16 round impossible differential, aim is to attack more rounds. So Normally you can add a few more rounds to the top or, uh, or to the bottom, but due to the general phase on network structure of height, we can add really more rounds. Actually we added five rounds to the top and five rounds to the bottom. We also added the final transformation. So uh, this adding more rounds is somewhat the same we, for with what we did for differential cryptanalysis, but ideas as follows. So question is, this difference uh, what kind of input difference should give this uh, output difference. So if you go back to the picture of height again, you are actually putting E0 tilde here and check what it should be in a previous round. So you go into the decryption direction. And if you add five more rounds, this is what you get. And you might say that, okay, why not I'm adding the one more round? Instead of five, maybe I can add six. So this will go here and so on. But when you try to perform the attack in that way, you will realize that the time complexity of the attack uh, cannot be less than 2 to the 128. But 2 to the 128 is the time complexity for the exhaustive search. So giving an attack that is worse than exhaustive search makes no sense. This is why we are trying to uh, attack the highest number of rounds, but also has the time complexity less than the time complexity of the exhaustive search. This is why we are added five rounds to the top. And you also go into encryption direction. Now you say that, okay, if this is the difference, what it would look like after one round of encryption, it would be this, two rounds of encryption, and so on. After five rounds of encryption, you say that with probability one, this kind of difference has to go to something like this, okay? So as you can guess now, our aim would be to uh, obtain plain text pairs, which has this kind of difference, and uh, check them if the cipher text has this kind of difference. Then our aim is to check if after five rounds of decryption in this direction and five rounds of encryption after this direction, if you observe this input difference and this output difference, which is actually the impossible differential, we will say that the key bytes that we have guessed for this operation cannot be correct because this is an impossible differential and correct key can never satisfy it. So question is, which kind of subkey bytes I need to guess in order to encrypt the pair from here to here? So this is why we actually put all of the subkeys that are used in these runs and we highlighted the ones that we need in order to check this input and output difference of the impossible differential. So in order to perform the attack, you have to guess all of these subkeys.
So you also need to go back to the table where we provided the relation between the master key bytes and the sub key bytes so that you can see that which uh, master key byte you need to guess so that you can capture this and so on. So you might think that okay I can actually uh, keep a counter for all of these bytes and you know guess them one by one but you will see that uh, the number of bytes here and here is actually is really huge so you cannot just try one by one so but we will perform some kind of an early abort technique for instance in the attack actually in the following slides we will show it but you will have uh, some kind of difference here and here so you would guess escape three perform actually one fourth of the round and uh, encrypt this one so this question mark goes here but this question mark would go here so if it is not zero then that key guess doesn't help you so there's no need to continue further so you guess the next key and perform the operation and so on and so forth so this way with the earlier board technique we can actually uh, keep the time complex this small so the attack is on 112 bits why this is the case so because these are the sub key bytes that we need to capture and if you go all the way back to the relationship between the master key bytes and the sub key bytes if you highlight all of the sub key bytes and write any keys that you need to guess you would observe that you don't need the whole master key to capture all of the side keys but you need uh, only 112 bits so instead of 16 bytes you need actually 14 bytes of the master key this is something you can check by yourself so aim is to create an uh, array actually kind of some kind of a counter but actually it is just a true or false value so you initialize them to zero if any key guess for this 112 bits uh, represented here if it satisfies the uh, impossible differential then this counter will be one so we will eliminate that key at the end of the attack of course if you use enough plain text pairs all of the keys will have the uh, counter as one and only one of them will end up being zero and that will be the correct key but of course this is not always the best approach because in order to achieve such a goal you have to need a lot of plain text pairs and sometimes this would mean that uh, you need to have maybe all possible plain text which is not something a good idea so in practice what we do is instead of using that many uh, plain text and eliminate all of the wrong ones let's say that we eliminate a big part of the wrong keys and then end up with some of the candidate keys and then do exhaustive search on the remaining parts and in this attack we will do that so we start with the attack saying that uh, obtain two to the one hundred and seven seven pairs in the form this so you need pairs which have their XOR in the form this so you might say that why this is the case go back to the picture as you can see this is the input difference the plain text should have okay so we will have uh, we will need plain text in this form so here we say that we need two to the 107 pairs in this form but you might say that okay the block size is 64 bits so at most i can get 2 to the 64 plain text then how can i end up with this many pairs so actually uh, you can uh, obtain pairs at, in the maximum case a uh, square of 2 to the 64 which is you know 2 to the 128 because think about it in this way here we are fixing some of the bits saying that those bits have, shouldn't have any difference but you are saying that these bits can be anything so just assume that you have 10 pairs having uh, any value here so their XOR can be anything but these bits are, are the same so when you XOR those 10 plain text with each other there isn't any difference here so how many pairs can you generate from those 10 plain text since any two plain text you choose from out of this 10 would be good for you this is actually combination of 10 with 2 which is actually 10 times 9 divided by 2 which is 45 so out of 10 plain text you can get 
45 pairs. So this is why the number of pairs can exceed the number of possible plain text you can get. Think about this uh, in your, uh, by yourself. By structure, we mean the values where you fix here, and uh, 2 to the 64 plain text where there are any difference in these bits. This is a common technique that is used in cryptanalysis. Now you you want to the encryption of 2 to the 107 pairs, but only the pairs which have the ciphertext difference in this form is good for you. So go back to the picture. As you can see, the ciphertext should be in this form. The difference should be in this form. So you will only keep pairs that has this difference. But as you can see, we are actually fixing 8 here, 8 here, 8 here, and 1 bit here. So it is like 25 bits. You are fixing 25 bits. And you say that other bits can have any difference. But this means that observing such a difference has probability 1 over 2 to the 25. But you have this many pairs. If you multiply both of them, you end up with 2 to the 82 pairs. So this is a good thing to eliminate like this because now you, instead of performing encryption operation on all of these pairs, you need to perform operation on these ones. So if you try to see the, the big picture, this is the structure. Uh, you can see the resemblance with the previous figure, but here the dark blue ones actually the values that you need to capture, right? These light blue ones are z uh, question marks. These white ones are zero differences. So in order to check the impossible differential, you need the values here and here, and at the bottom here and here. So you have the values of this dark uh, rectangles because this is the plain text and this is the cipher text so you know their pair differences so you have these values so you have to do operation step by step first you need the value of subkey 3 to encrypt these two bytes so this one goes here this one goes here but go back to the table you will see that subkey 3 comes from the master key 3 so you have to guess this byte, you have this, perform the partial encryption operation and check if this byte has no difference. So this, since this is a byte, the probability of observing zero difference here is 2 to the minus 8. So in other words, you have 8-bit condition here. So if you perform this operation for every possible pair and key, 2 to the 8 of them will not satisfy it. So the number of pairs from after this point on will reduce by 2 to the 8. Next step is now we say that go from bottom this time obtain the values of whitening key 7 and sub key 103 but both of them come from master key part 1. Guess that and perform one round of decryption obtain these values and check if you go back here the, there should be 0 here check if it is 0 again it has condition of 8 bits now you need to something in the middle, but there is no condition here because there are question marks. This is why we say that you don't need to check anything, but you have to guess and so on and so forth. Continue in this way. Guess all of the, sorry, the master key bytes that you need so that you can go this way and finally obtain the values here and here. If at this point a pair satisfies this impossible differential, all of the guesses for the master key bytes at this point you have guessed 112 bits. That guess is wrong, so you eliminate it. So this way, if you do it for all of the possible candidate keys, then you will be eliminating a lot of the wrong ones. So uh, what is the probability that a key is not eliminated by a pair? Since uh, it is the probability is 2 to the minus 8, it will be 1 minus 2 to the minus 8. And when we perform the attack, since as you remember we have conditions here, we started with 2 to the 82 pairs, but uh, 8 by 8 the number reduces, and at the end you end up with 2 to the 11 pairs. So probability that a key is not eliminated by all pairs is 1 minus 2 to the minus 8 to the power 2 to the 11, which is this, but since we have 2 to the 112, candidate keys 
and this is the probability that it is not eliminated so you end up with this many pairs sorry this many keys that are not eliminated one of them is correct but instead of one you ended up with two to the 100 and you might say that why would I uh, why would it this be good for me because initially you had the huge space which is 2 to the 112 now you reduce it to the 2 to the 100 so which one is correct you don't know but you can perform exhaustive search since we this keys only has 112 bits the remaining 16 bits can be has to be tried one by one so you need to perform an exhaustive search of 2 to the 116 times so the attack is actually composed of two parts first you perform the impossible differential you eliminate some of the wrong keys but you have still a lot of keys and perform exhaustive search with only on the remaining ones so the final exhaustive search has this many encryption operations but the question is you we have performed a lot of operations to eliminate this key so what is the time complexity of all of these steps that we have done so far right because here we start with 2 to the 82 pairs and we guess this key and perform encryption operation here so what is the time complexity here so here we comp computed all of them so you have 2 to the 82 pairs right so you perform encryption operation on all of them and since these are pairs this means that there are two elements here so this is why we multiply it with two and we are guessing the master key byte which is just eight bits so there are two to the eight possibilities so you repeat this operation for all of them so this is the number of encryption operations you perform in the first step by first step i'm talking about here so you guess mk3 which can have two to the eight different values you have two to the eight to two pairs you encrypt all of them by this key so this is why the time complexity of that step is two times two to the eight times two to the eight to two but here we are dividing it with some values why this is the case because we are going to compare the our number of operations here with the exhaustive search which is just 26 rounds of encryption but here we perform this many operations but they are not 26 round high encryptions right this they are just one round encryption this is why we divide it with 1 over 26 also this is not actually one round of encryption it is actually one fourth of an encryption this is why we divide it with 1 over 4 you might say that why this is the case so go back to the picture of height so this is height so one round of encryption actually this right but in the first step we just take the values in these two bytes and perform this operation right we didn't touch the remaining part so we are actually performing one fourth of the whole round so this is the time complexity in your first step in the second step now since you are guessing eight more keys go back to the picture right now you are guessing mk1 so now this means that you are repeating all of the process for 16 bits of the key because you are actually these are like two for loops uh, in each other so the and all of the for loops has uh, two to the eight elements let's say so this is why this step is time complexity has time complexity two times two to the 16 but now since the there was an 8-bit condition now our number of pairs are no longer 2 to the 82 but we are expecting to 2 to the 8 of them to be eliminated so this is why you end up with 2 to the 74 the rest is the same so these are the same but if you continue in this way we are keep guessing uh, some of the master key bytes so this uh, number are increasing from time to time and there are some conditions so the remaining pairs reduce from time to time so at some points these numbers are huge from the other ones so so far we have the largest as 2 to the 108 but if we continue in this way you will see that there are some values like 2 to the 117 and so on so if you sum all of them all of the 29 steps we see that this is equivalent to 2 to the 119.53 so first part of our attack has this many time complexity 
but the second part has this many time complexity but this number is kind of small compared to this right so this is actually the kind of your whole time complexity so our time complexity becomes this 2 to the 119.53 and our attack requires 2 to the 61 chosen plane text why this is the case again go back to the picture we said that we are going to perform the attack by choosing 2 to the 13 structures of 2 to the 48 plane text this means that you are fixing 33 sorry 13 bits here and saying that the 48 bits here can be anything so this is why we have uh, 13 plus 48 which is 61 so this means that your data complexity is 2 to the 61 chosen plain text so here we are comparing our attack with the previous ones in the proposal of the cipher the designer said that they can attack 18 rounds but later on we improve this attack to 25 rounds so because he used properties that the designer didn't use by looking at lose attack we said that maybe we can do better and this is we increase the number of attack rounds by one but also we reduce the time complex that of the attack in a really good way so this is uh, one of the best attacks on the cipher and as far as we know uh, this attack is actually and this one together we also provide the related key attack to this cipher and both of them actually prevented this cipher to become an as a standard for lightweight block ciphers